Hey y'all, it's Sabrina. So for this week's video, I'm gonna go into all the information that you'll need if you're gonna be living in the employee housing while working at Big Sky Resort up in Big Sky, Montana. In this video, I'm gonna give you a room tour of what my room looked like when I was living up at Big Sky in the employee housing. We're gonna talk about all the housing details from the application process to actually moving in. Then I'm gonna talk about the details of the housing itself, encompassing everything that you're gonna to need to know. And then I'm gonna give you my opinion if I think it's worth it or not. As always, there are timestamps down below, so feel free to skip to wherever you need to be. So the first thing we're gonna get into is the room tour itself and hopefully get an idea of what you'll need to bring with you. There are a couple different buildings and places to live, when you're living in employee housing with Big Sky. I was living at the Mountain Lodge up in the mountain itself. And one thing I will say is that I was told I have the oldest housing available. I don't know if that's completely true or not, but this is kind of a base of what you can expect upon moving into Big Sky. So here we go. So I am here up in Montana right now on my next seasonal job. And I wanted to give you a little bit of a tour of the employee housing in case you're gonna stay in employee housing so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. I am going to look at the room before we completely unload all of our stuff. That way you can kind of get an empty picture of like what you can fit in here and what will work best for you without looking at all of my belongings. So this is the room itself. It does sleep two people. We're currently in Mountain Village. You see that you get your two beds. You get two bureaus or dressers for each of your roommates. I will say they're, the furniture is not in the best shape. For example, like my bottom board board is like super broken, so I couldn't fit anything in here. Um, and it kind of just is, it is what it is type scenario. You've got shelving on your side, shelving for your roommate. You do have a TV um, with the lovely remote control. In our room, we do get cable. From what I've heard, a lot of the rooms, the cable doesn't work or the TV's broken. You do get a lovely heater because it does get really cold in this room. The only thing about the heater is once you turn it on, it's hard to get it off. And after like an hour of the heater being on, it's like a sauna in here. So much so that other people keep their windows open when it's like 19 degrees out. You do get a microwave and a mini fridge. If you go up a room and you pay for the more expensive rooms, you do get a full size fridge. The mini fridge, you do have to fit what you can for both you and your roommate. The freezer's on the top and you fit what you can in the bottom. We removed the shelving, or we're going to, um, to make it a little bit easier fit. This is all the access you have in regards to like cooking and food, your lovely microwave, um, because there is not a kitchen on site. So look up what you can find and do what you can. Then the sink is on the outside. You do get provided with a trash bin, and the only thing that you get when you come in are these sleeping mats. Um, they're brand new when you get them. We already put ours on. You're definitely gonna want them because to be honest, the mattresses, I don't know if you can tell, but they're not in the best shape. In the bathroom, you do not get toilet paper. Definitely bring that with you, but they give you a broom. Some rooms have a plunger and a thing to clean your toilet with. And then the shower, it's on the other side here. This is the shower you got. I will say, um, so we actually have been here for a little while now. The shower pressure is absolutely amazing, but the curtain is nothing. So I definitely recommend you getting your own curtain because you're gonna leak all over the floor if you don't. Um, that light does not work. That light does work. Um, there's a switch over there. It's pretty standard. And yeah, it's a pretty small room. It fits, like I said, two people, um, two beds, and you have a lovely window here to your outside. And the view is pretty spectacular. Won't lie about that. It is like an outside setup. It's not like an indoor hotel. And then you can see lovely outside and where you work. All right, so that is it. And the next thing you're gonna see is me getting into all the semantics. So now that you've seen the room itself and got an idea 
of the situation and the style that you'll be living in, let's jump into how housing works. Now, before I get into the application process, please note, if you're an employee working at Big Sky, it's not mandatory to live in Big Sky housing. It's just provided for you if you need somewhere to live. If you are not sure if you want to live in the employee housing, start looking for places to live because when I tell you they fill up fast, they definitely fill up fast. All right, so now let's talk about the application process for housing itself. Once you are given an offer of employment, from Big Sky Resort and do accept it, you will be sent a link from the company to apply for employee housing. I strongly recommend applying right when housing opens up, right when you get that notification because it does fill up fast and it is on a first come first serve basis. When choosing your housing, you do have a couple of different options when it comes to where you want to live. Essentially, you can live down in Bozeman, which is about an hour's drive. From what I'm told, it's two hours by bus just because of how slow the bus does move. Or you can live up on the mountain. There's a possibility by the time you're watching this video, there may be more open. Due to COVID, it was a little bit different this season. It's completely up to you where you want to live. There's lots of different reasons to choose either option. I will go over that later on in this video of recommendations on which ones to choose. The next thing you need to consider is if you do or you do not want a roommate. You can live by yourself or you can live with one other roommate. In normal seasons, there are also quad and triple rooms available for multiple roommates, but due to COVID just right now, you can either live by yourself or live with one other person. For the 2020 to 2021 ski season, it was $20 a day for a single room. And then there's two other options. There's either a standard room, which is $10 a night and you get a roommate or a double room, which is a little bit bigger and you get a full size fridge and that's $15 a day with a roommate. And that money is per person, not per room. When you finish choosing where you wanna live and the type of room you want, you do have to pay a $50 application fee. You do not get that money back. You pay that toward the company for putting in the application for housing. Once you're finished with that and send it in, whenever they get to assigning rooms and roommates, they'll then probably a couple weeks, maybe even a month later, depending on when you apply, send you the information of where you've been placed and who your roommate is and probably the email address of your roommate so that you can get in contact with them and figure some things out before you get there. Once you are assigned your room and your roommate, you'll go into your portal, you'll accept that. Before you move in, you do need to pay a $100 deposit fee. You do get this fee back upon leaving or at the end of the season. It's put on your last paycheck and you have to pay it in case you do any damage to the room, they'll deduct from that $100. If you do more damage to the room than that $100, they'll deduct from your paycheck. Now, if you don't have a car or you are flying there, the closest airport is going to be the Bozeman Airport. Again, it's about an hour to Big Sky if you're living up on the mountain. So you'll fly in and you can take the Skyline bus up to the mountain if you're living up there, or you can take the Skyline bus or the local bus to whatever housing you have down on the mountain. If you are driving there, there will be spots that you can park outside of your housing. Up on the mountain, there are not assigned spots, so it's kind of a first come, first serve thing. If you are driving and you do have a car, the emails that you're sending back and forth, there'll be information in those emails in regards to how parking works, how having a car on campus works, and then registering your vehicle. As far as the check-in process goes, you'll get an email on how exactly they want you to check in. For COVID, we kind of just showed up, they had our keys waiting for us in our room and we sent them an email and let them know we're here. Once you get there, that email that you do send either to your supervisor or the housing people to let them know you are moving in on this date. Yes, I am here, I'm set to go, I'm moving in now. That is the day that they will start charging for your housing. So if you move in a week or two before you actually start work, you're still gonna start getting deducted on that day. It'll just come out of your later paycheck. What is nice about how you pay your rent is it comes right from your paycheck so you don't have to worry about cutting a check or getting your rent in on time once your season is over there is a process that you will go through an online form that you fill out say hey I am checking out you do have to make sure the room is presentable and clean before you leave so it's ready for the next person and then they'll tell you who you turn your keys into now that we've gone over the application process and how actually getting your housing works Let's go into all of the details of the housing itself. First of all, what is included? So once you get there, like you saw in the video, the room's pretty much completely empty. On your mattresses, you will each get a mattress cover, one for you, one for your roommate. And then they also provide you with a mini fridge and a microwave, a broom and a dustpan. You also get a TV that is hooked up to cable and the majority of the TVs in housing do actually work. If you're unlucky enough to get a TV that doesn't work, just talk to your housing supervisor, see what they can do for you. Now, if you're living down in Bozeman, chances are you're gonna be living in a hotel. From what I am told, 
told the hotels that you were living in have all of the bed sheets, but I definitely get in touch with someone and just make sure because I don't know what it's going to be like at the time you actually move in if you do live in one of those rooms down in Bozeman. I definitely recommend besides just the bed sheets and the toilet paper and the shampoo, all the extra stuff you need to bring, some things that were super helpful that you are allowed to have in your dorms are anything like a coffee maker or a crock pot or a blender or extension cords, a mat for your door so you're not dragging the snow in because if you're working the winter season, all you're gonna see is snow. I could go on and on, there's a long list. Take the time to figure out what you need and what works best for you. Just make sure you do read the housing application forms to make sure you're not bringing in something that you're not allowed to have but you'd actually be surprised about how much you actually can have in the dorms. As far as the kitchen goes, you do not have access to a kitchen. That means no oven, no stove. You've got your mini fridge or a bigger fridge if you're in a double room, and then you have your microwave. That's where a toaster or a crock pot blender, that stuff comes in handy to help you cook because it's gonna be a lot of microwave meals, hot pockets, mac and cheese, and soup. As far as trash goes, you do have a trash bucket. You need to buy your own trash bags and there's a designated spot for you to dump your trash. Do not leave it outside your door because they do fine you if you leave it outside your door. There are also lots of wild animals out in Big Sky, especially if you're living up on the mountain. So watch out for them. Please dispose of your trash properly. In regards to Wi-Fi, you don't have to pay for Wi-Fi. All the dorms do have Wi-Fi. I will say it can be excruciatingly slow. Just be aware of that. Service on the mountain is a bit crazy. Weirdly enough, a lot of times I would have better service in my room up in the mountain than I did when I was down in Bozeman. Not sure how that works. I guess just check your cellular provider, see if you will or won't have service. Just know you're living up in the mountains, so it's gonna go in and out. In regards to heat, yes, the rooms do have heat. One thing I will say is that the heaters are insane. You turn them on, sometimes it's hard to turn them off, but once they're on for 10 minutes, the rooms heat up like crazy. So much so that when it was like 10 degrees outside, a bunch of people on our floor all had their windows open because it was way too hot in their rooms. So I'm gonna recommend that when you put the heat on, put it on for a short amount of time and then turn it off because it heats up like crazy there. So as far as laundry goes, I will put a little video up here about what the laundry room looked like. There are laundry rooms in each of the buildings. It does cost $1.50 for the washing machine and $1.50 for the dryer. The laundry rooms can get super, super busy. So I definitely recommend doing it during the day. I found that the morning time and the afternoon shifts, that was the time when there was pretty much no one in the laundry room. There's not a ton of washers and dryers accessible when you compare it to how many people actually live in the buildings. So I definitely say try to find that sweet spot, that good time where no one's there so you can get your laundry done. You do need to use quarters. You cannot use a credit card. I got quarters down in Bozeman we went to a regular laundry mat and just put in a 20 and just got a bunch of quarters for the month or two months but something else that you can do I've been told that in Big Sky in the exchange over in I think it's called like the moose it's like a convenience store apparently you can get quarters there as well common rooms so as far as common rooms we were told there are no common rooms. To be completely honest with you, I don't know if that's true or not, if they just decided to block them off because of COVID or something happened. But from what I'm told, there were no common rooms. If you lived at Big Sky and that is not the actual answer, please put that information down in the comments below so the next person watching this can find out if there are common rooms or if there are not common rooms. Room checks. So room checks was not something that was done when I was living at Big Sky and that is due to COVID. However, from how I'm told every other normal operating season works is that they do room checks. When you are signing on to live in employee housing, you are giving security and the people who are the housing workers as well as maids, I believe, you're giving them entrance to your room to go into your room when you are not there. That's why before you sign something, always read the fine print carefully. What they do is they will go into your room. They'll make sure it's clean. I don't know how clean they like it. I've been told sometimes they're pretty harsh on the standards, but I really don't know because they didn't do it when I was there. As far as security goes, there are cameras set up in the hallways, outside the buildings, and in the laundry rooms themselves, and they are monitored. You and your roommate also get your own key. There are some rooms that are not actual a physical key, but a keypad, so you'll know that combination. The laundry room itself also has a key combination that is sent to all the people who are living in that building. How far is it to work? So if you are living up in Mountain Lodge or up in the mountain, about a five minute walk. Um, Super easy, it's a direct shot right to work. That is a big pro of living and housing up in the mountain. If you are down in Bozeman and you have your own car, it's about an hour up. I've been told the traffic can be very hectic. If you do live down in Bozeman and you do not have a car, they give you a free bus pass to take the Skyline bus up and back. 
you have to make sure you are paying attention to that schedule so you don't miss the bus. From what all of my friends and my coworkers told me is that one way from Bozeman to Big Sky was two hours. So that's kind of a long commute time, but it's a good time to nap if you need to. What if you have a car? So like I said a little bit earlier in the video, if you have a car, there are employee spots available and there's also kind of like a spillover lot. If the spots in front of housing are filled up, you can go park in that lot as well. If you have a car, there is one day every week they will send you email reminders that you do have to move your car for that entire day because that is the day that they plow. You do not have to have a car if you are living or working at Big Sky. Honestly, it makes it 10 times easier if you do have a car just to get into Bozeman for Walmart trips, to get your groceries or anything you might need, getting around the mountain itself. It just, it's so much easier and so much faster. If you don't have a car, there is free transportation for you to get around the mountain and down to Bozeman. So if you need to get down to Bozeman and you're an employee with Big Sky, your supervisor will give you a free bus card. Every time you get on the bus, you'll hand it to them and they'll punch that card and that is a one-way trip into Bozeman. So if your punch card's getting low, make sure you pick up a new one from your supervisor before boarding the bus. If you are not going into Bozeman, but you still want to get around the mountain, you can hop on the shuttle bus for free. There's a schedule online. Just look up Skyline Buses. They'll tell you all the stops that they drop you off. You don't need to use your employee ID. You or any of the guests who are at Big Sky can get on those buses and get around the mountain. Now I'm going to get into some pros and cons, how it is to live on the mountain, as opposed to living down in Bozeman. So let's start with up on the mountain. First of all, when it comes to getting to work, it's so nice just to wake up 20 minutes, 30 minutes before your shift, get ready and walk 10 minutes to work. It's also nice when the day's over, just another five, 10 minute walk home. The commute, there really is none. On your days off when you're ready to go ski, Again, you just wake up and the lifts are pretty much right there. A con of living in the mountain, from what I'm told, is that the rooms themselves are a lot more run down and a lot older than down in Bozeman. Now, if you are living down in Bozeman, huge pro is that the Walmart's right there, the entire town's right there. There's a lot more to do down in Bozeman itself. If you need something, you've got your pharmacies, your convenience stores, your ski shops. It's all right there for you. And the stuff down there is gonna be a lot cheaper than the stuff that is up in the mountain when it comes to things like buying gear, buying equipment, going out to eat or buying groceries. Another pro is that the rooms are also a lot nicer. They're basically hotels that were bought out by the resort. So you get a nice size hotel room, comfortable beds. And then you also have someone who comes and cleans for you because the hotel still have maids. The biggest con to living down in Bozeman would be the commute. If you are someone who does have a car and you're driving back and forth, even if it's only gonna be an hour, it's gonna be shorter than taking the bus for you. It's still a lot of traffic. So you do have to get up earlier in order to get to work. If you're somebody who is not taking a car to work and you're taking the Skyline bus, then you have to make sure you're getting up super early, but way before your shift to get to the bus stop to catch that bus. If you miss that bus, then you gotta call your employer, tell them, hey, I missed the first bus. I gotta wait an hour till the next one. I'm gonna be late for work. Or you do make that bus and it's still a two hour commute to get you up the mountain. And when the day is over and you're tired, it's a two hour ride back down the mountain. I would say between the two, those are the biggest pros and cons, but it's completely up to you. Weigh your paycheck, weigh what counts as a pro and con for you. Figure out what is better when it comes to housing and where you should live. Okay, so now that I've given you as much information that I could possibly think of, I'm gonna dive into my opinion on the housing and if it's worth it or not. So I'm gonna put a huge disclaimer on this and say, I'm very used to doing seasonal jobs. I'm very used to living in some weird places. I've lived in classrooms, I've lived in tents. Fact is when you work seasonal jobs, you kind of get what you get and you don't get upset. However, the reason the housing didn't make it super worth it to me was specifically because of how much I was paying for the room. Of course now, if you are somebody who gets paid an hourly wage that's a lot higher than that, it may not matter to you. And if you factor in the free ski pass you get, again, that may not matter to you. However, it's how the housing actually was versus how much I was paying for it that did not make a lot of sense to me, but didn't make it worth it. So some of the things that I had problems with the housing was that they're building a brand new building outside of our housing, which made it super hard to sleep in on the days that I had off because they started super early in the morning. It made it super hard to go to sleep the fact that the walls are super thin so we could hear the people next to us, not only their conversations or their yelling matches, but down to the video games and movies that they were watching. The plumbing itself is super loud. The fridge and the heater, you can hear buzzing all night, which can be very frustrating. And then with the walls being thin too, we also had vents in our bathrooms that connected to our neighbors. You were not supposed to smoke inside. You are supposed to smoke outside, but it was very evident when people were smoking inside because the smoke would waft through into our rooms and it smelled horrible. It smelled like smoke. The rooms themselves are also very tired. They're not super taken care of. I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but the mattresses themselves 
shelves have stains, the wallpaper's all beaten up. Combining that with the fact that the only meals we could cook were things like mac and cheese or microwavable friendly, and we were just kind of taking PB&Js or meat sandwiches to work every day, spending more money because when we got sick of that food because we didn't have access to cook, we spent more money at the resorts and the restaurants around town. It kind of just made what we were paying for the room and the room itself and the situation just not worth it. Now, again, I will say, if you're someone who is getting a higher pay wage than I was, maybe completely worth it to you. If those things don't matter, maybe completely worth it to you. It is my opinion, but I will say some of my coworkers lived in the $15 a day housing instead of the $10 a day that I was, and their situation was exactly the same as mine. The only difference was that they had a bigger fridge and a little bit bigger rooms. They weren't super happy about it either. Our friends had an issue with their shower. It stopped working. So they were given kind of like cards to go to the hotel down the street to go shower and use that facility. But it took them several weeks before they went and actually fixed the shower. So when you have an issue in your room or something is going wrong, they also don't really help you out or attend to it right away. It's a lot of trying to email them and get their attention and try to get help with something. And normally if it's like your TV's not working, okay, it's a TV. But if your shower is not working, you want it to work on time. Also to completely contradict everything I just said, if you asked me if I were to do it again and live in employee housing, my answer would be if I was getting paid a higher wage at a different job at the resort and did not have a car, yes, I would live in employee housing. Cause to be honest, you cannot beat the convenience. Now, if I did have a car, I would find my own housing. That's just my opinion. It's totally up to you to weigh the pros and cons, but I figured I'd let you know what I thought about it. So that wraps up today's video. Hopefully I answered all the questions that you might have if you're looking to live in employee housing while working for Big Sky Resort for your ski season or for your summer season. If you are currently living at Big Sky Resort or you have lived at Big Sky Resort and you live somewhere else besides the Mountain Lodge, please put some information down below of the kind of living situation that you experienced and if it was worth it for you so that future employees who are gonna live in housing have a better idea of what they should expect. If there are any questions that you do have that I didn't mention, please again, ask it in the comments below. The reason I'm making this video is so that you are prepared and that you have all of your questions answered before moving into employee housing. If you're set up to live in employee housing and are about to work at the resort, have an amazing ski season or summer season. And until next time, I hope this helps.